let's build and code the ultimate pincers of justice. When I'm doing robot battles with kids, whether it be sumo bots or plant battles, is they grab a couple of these pincer pieces and they say, I want to make a weapon that does kind of does this. You really need two motors, one to do this side, one to do this side. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a weapon that uses pincers, and I'm also going to show you how to code it because that's the important part. So ultimately, I want to add two motors to my robot and kind of like this maybe and that's pretty easy but sometimes i just like to add it to another frame it's nice and flat and two motors pretty central pretty symmetrical i'm going to add these things so there is a cross hole there Cross hole could go in there. Laxel. few times so it doesn't get tangled in the wheels. Looks a bit of a mess but it's nice and secure. I don't use those little clips anymore. Can't stand them. They wreck my motors. So I'm going to plug the sensor into B. The sensor is going into B. Uh, I've actually modified the sensor a bit because now it's front heavy. So I put the ball at the front again. And the sensor is not too far from the ground. Okay, so this is my coding for the Sumo Bot, and it basically should work if I press play down the bottom here. ultrasonic sensor so it sees the other robot and there it's pretty straightforward here on your code you can see that I've plugged the sensors into A and B the movement wheels are into C and D but the pincers are E and F now if you look down the bottom left at E you'll see and if I move the pincer the number of degrees changes Okay. And if I change F, the number of degrees changes on F. All right. So what we need to do is we need to get it into a position which is like the ultimate starting position, which I reckon would be there. Okay. So on our code, we need it to reflect those two numbers, 52 degrees and 216 degrees. So now we've got our code here to make it travel around the board, we still need to make the pincers start in the perfect position. So go to the blue motors tab and choose the second block down. And this allows the motors to start in a certain position. So we can make it for motor E go to the shortest path, which was 52 degrees. And if you put that near the start there, then at the very start of the program, it's always going to put that arm at a position of 52 degrees. Then we just need to get another one and plug that one into F. And this was 216 degrees. So this arm will go into the perfect position of 216 degrees. If you look up here, those numbers just match these numbers, don't they? So the left arm is 52 degrees and the right arm is around 215 or 216. Alright, now we've got to make it 
use the distance sensor now. So we'll grab the block for the distance sensor or ultrasonic sensor, which I've plugged into A. So we can leave that on A. We're going to make that 30 centimeters. And we're going to start moving at the start so it heads towards the other robot. But then we're going to make it, we're going to make the motor just turn a quarter of a turn. So we we'll go to motors and choose rotations. So this is just going to be for the um, left hand pincer. We're just going to make it go a quarter of a turn. There may be some trial and error with this because it might turn the wrong way. But let's just assume it's going to turn correctly if it turns this way. And then we can duplicate that one and make it turn the opposite way for a quarter of a turn. And in the uh, control tab, we can get that to repeat a few times. So I reckon four times is good. When it sees the other robot, it's going to head towards it and the pincers are going to go back and forth four times. Now, during a battle, this might happen a couple of times. So we might want it to go back into the correct position. So I'm just going to take these ones out and I'm going to duplicate them. Put them over here. And we're going to put that one <clears throat> at the end. So that whenever the weapon is activated, after it's activated, it's going to go back to its starting position. Okay. Now we're going to just duplicate this whole thing now. We're going to have another stack. And we're going to use the opposite motor for this stack. Don't even need that one. All right. So when it starts moving, it's going to do its thing. The pins is in the correct position. When it sees the other robot, they're going to go back and forth a few times. But these ones, I think need to go the opposite way. Okay, make sure they're the opposite to each other. So they're the opposite to each other, and they're the opposite to each other. And this, of course, has to be 216, or whatever it is for your best position. Put your pincers in the best position and duplicate these numbers here. Okay. Your numbers will probably be different to mine, depending on how you built your robot. And when you're ready to test it, press play. Shout out to my first three members. You can become a member too just by hitting that little join button on the homepage of my channel. That'd be awesome. I try and give a shout out nearly every second video to my members. So thanks for supporting me if you're a member. And please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. Check out this playlist of all my famous tips and tricks for using Spike Prime.